thus far we've been focusing more on the nucleus of uh, atoms. So we already understand that Rutherford came up with a nuclear model and that says that the nucleus contains uh, protons and neutrons, but Rutherford's model of the nuclear atom doesn't talk anything about uh, the electrons or how they are arranged or uh, what's their uh, characteristics. And one of the interesting ideas is you would think that uh, electrons would be immediately attracted to the nucleus. So nucleus has protons, it's positively charged, electrons are negatively charged, you would think that they would immediately get pulled into the nucleus. And uh, we understand that that's not what happens. So the study of electrons really started with uh, Niels Bohr in about uh, 1913, and he picked kind of the simplest situation. So he studied a hydrogen atom. So a hydrogen atom is just one proton uh, in the nucleus and uh, one electron um, uh, orbiting it. And so this is what he did uh, his beginning work on. And with the Bohr atom, some of the things that he was able to conclude is that electrons move in circular orbits uh, around the nucleus. So this is very much like how the moon orbits uh, the Earth. And electrons tend to move in fixed sets of orbits called stationary states. And um, not going to go into it, this, but this is related to the fact that an electron has a wavelength like we just talked about that because it has a wavelength, there are only specific distances from the nucleus that that electron can move where the um, wavelengths are not going to uh, interfere with each other. So because electrons have wavelength, they have these fixed orbits. They have fish, fixed distances that they can be away from the nucleus. Uh, one other thing he was able to come up with is uh, calculating the energy of an electron in the state, so in the different distances away from the nucleus. And so he came up with this equation that, that relates uh, the energy of the electron itself is related to a constant Rh divided by n squared. And n is an integer value. So n is something uh, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about, and it's very important. But this integer value is related to the idea that electrons can only have these specific orbits around uh, the nucleus. So he came up with a, an equation that relates the energy of an electron. And uh, really how we're going to apply this is by looking at electrons moving from these different stationary states. So in looking at this equation, one of the things that we can uh, understand is that as the electron moves away from the nucleus, so as n becomes larger, the energy value or the energy interaction between the nucleus and the electron decreases. So as the electron gets further away from the nucleus, that positive and negative charge has uh, less of an electrostatic interaction, and so the electron becomes less energetic. Um, n is related to the distance the electron is away from the nucleus, and such that as, as the n value increases, the distance from the nucleus increases. So as we go from n equals 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, the electron is moving further away from the nucleus. And so this makes sense that as n increases, the energy of the electron decreases because we're getting further away from the nucleus, the electrostatic interactions are decreasing. One of the other things he came up with is that electrons can move from these different stationary states. So n equals 1 or n equals 4. It can jump between these. It can go from like one, n equals 1 to n equals 4, or n equals 4 to n equals 3. There's different transitions that these electrons can make. And that these transitions moving from one n value to another are related to either the absorption or the emission of energy inside of our um, hydrogen atom. So, so what happens is if my hydrogen atom absorbs a photon, what that does is it kicks an electron to a higher n value. So it goes from a low n value to a high n value. So that implies the hydrogen atom absorbed some energy. And the exact opposite is true. So if I take an electron and move it from a higher n value to a lower n value, the hydrogen atom is losing energy and that energy um, comes across as the loss of a photon. So our hydrogen atom can either absorb or lose a photon, and in doing that, there's going to be a corresponding change in the stationary state of our uh, electron around our hydrogen atom. Our energy values are related to these um, stationary states. There are only a certain number of transitions 
that we can have. Because of this, these transitions are called quantized. So once again, this is leading us into the idea of quantum mechanics. And this is what we mean by quantized, is I can only make a transition from say n equals one to n equals two, or n equals one to n equals three. I can't go from n equals one to n equals 3.5. I only can go from these specific transition states. So there are only a limited number of transitions that are possible, and those transitions are, are defined for a specific element. So we begin by talking about them uh, with uh, the hydrogen atom, but other atoms have these transitions too. And this is part of what uh, lets astronomers understand what kind of elements are, say, in stars, is they can look for specific transitions that are associated with specific elements. So here we're still looking at hydrogen, and with this, uh, we're going to make some definitions. So when an electron is in its lowest stationary state, n is equal to 1. So there's no n equals 0. n equals 1 means that it is in its lowest energy or ground state. So it can't really lose any more energy to go down to a lower n value. Any n value that is higher than this n equals 1 is called the excited state. So that's the idea is um, if I'm in my ground state, in order to get to a higher n value, I need to absorb energy. That means I'm going into an excited state. So some of these transitions, um, there was a lot of work done on them. Uh, you might see some of this terminology uh, now. Uh, because there were so many transitions for a hydrogen atom, some of the transitions have a specific name. So if I'm talking about transitions where the lower n value is 1, this is called the Lyman series. So we're talking n equals 1 that goes to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5. All of those transitions are called part of the Lyman series. 2 is called the Balmer series. So if I go from 2 to 3, 2 to 4, 2 to 5, this is called a Balmer series of transitions. So they were so well studied, and there's actually so many transitions that some of the transitions had a specific name. So you still might... Uh, see these used occasionally. So what traditionally what we look at um, when we're talking about electrons is looking at the energy change between the change between these stationary states. So we've already decided that um, if a, a hydrogen atom absorbs a photon, the electron's going to go to a higher end value, or if an electron drops from a higher end value to a lower end value, it emits a photon. And that's what we're going to look at is um, the relationship between this absorption and emission of photons and the changes in these stationary states. So the overall equation uh, looks like this. So we still have R sub H, which is a constant for the hydrogen atom. And what we have is the energy of uh, the photon and the different uh, n values. So this is n initial is where we're starting at and n final is where we're going. And remember these n values are integers. So this equation discusses the relationship of the, the change in energy between going between different uh, n values inside of a hydrogen atom. So I believe there's other variations of this equation for other atoms like helium, but here we're just going to look at um, hydrogen. So there are two main ways that we can look at this equation, and that's either I'm absorbing, the, the hydrogen's absorbing a photon, or the hydrogen is giving off a photon. And really most questions involved with this uh, use one of those two vari variations, either we're absorbing a photon or giving off a photon. So for this first one, we have our uh, electron and our hydrogen atom. It's starting at n equals two and it drop, uh, n equals four and it drops to n equals two. And we say, what's the wavelength of the photon emitted? So with this, it's a little tricky. Remember, wavelength and energy is related. So what we're going to need to do is first find the energy of the photon that's emitted, and that's going to come from this equation. Once we get the energy, then we can look at the wavelength of the photon that is emitted. So here, the first thing I want to do is to find the energy of uh, the photon that's being emitted. I use this equation, uh, R sub H is a constant. I'm starting at the n value of 2, so that's my n sub i. I'm ending up at an n value of 2. So I'm going to use this equation to find the energy of the emitted photon. So here, R sub h is a constant. 
uh, in sub i is our initial in value. So I'm starting at an in value of 4, so that's in sub i. In sub f is our final in value, and here we're ending up in an in value of 2. I plug these numbers in, I do the math, and I get a change in energy of the hydrogen atom of this negative 4.086 times 10 to the minus 9th. So remember, this equation is talking about the hydrogen atom. And as an electron moves from n equals 4 to n equals 2, the hydrogen atom is actually losing energy. And that's what this equation shows by this negative sign. The hydrogen atom is losing a small amount of energy. And so that's why this equation shows a negative number. But now we're going to equate this energy to a photon. I can't have a photon with a negative energy. So what happens is I need to, to realize that the energy of the photon is going to be the negative of the energy of this hydrogen, that the hydrogen is losing energy, that energy is being transferred for, to a photon, but the photon needs a positive energy. So hydrogen's losing energy, that energy's been transferred to a photon, so the photon has a positive energy. So this is one of these uh, sort of tricks that they never talk about that. Uh, it's up to you to make that change. You need to remember that the photon has a positive energy. So this equation is negative because the hydrogen atom is losing energy. That energy is being transferred to a photon. The photon has a positive energy. So you just need to know that you need to remove this negative sign and give our photon a positive energy. Once we um, do that, we understand um, the, the relationship between the energy of the photon and the wavelength of a photon. So we talked about that previously. Uh, remember, there's two um, variations of an energy equation. One equates energy to the frequency of light. Another equates energy to the wavelength of the light. So we're going to use the one with the wavelength because that's what we're asking for here. We used um, this equation to come up with the energy of the photon. I then take this equation and solve it for the variable that I'm interested in. I'm, I want to know the wavelength of the, the electron that's coming off. So I solve this equation for wavelength. And so that says that the wavelength of our emitted photon is going to be equal to the constants hc divided by the energy of the photon in joules. So these two are constants, h and c are constant. We calculated how much energy our photon has right here. I plug that in. And remember, my answer is going to come out in meters. When we do these calculations, there are uh, our unit of distance is actually in meters. So we get that the wavelength of light is 4.86 times 10 to the minus 7th meters. And uh, that's unfortunately not how we typically talk about it, but this is the wavelength. And if I want to convert it into nanometers, what we get is 486 nanometers uh, um, is the wavelength. So this hydrogen atom is giving off blue light when it does this transition from 4 to 2. So this is the idea um, if I'm looking at uh, using a spectrometer to look at, say, light uh, coming in from space. If I see this specific wavelength of light, uh, 486 coming off of something, I begin to think that there might be hydrogen inside of there because this is a specific transition for hydrogen going from 4 to 2. It emits blue light. So when I see light that has a wavelength of 486, I start thinking that it might be hydrogen. Another variation of these types of calculations is to calculate what's going to be the new in value after our hydrogen atom absorbs a photon. So here I've told you that our hydrogen atom has an electron that is already at n equals 1 and that it absorbs a photon of a specific frequency given here. And we want to find out what the new n value of that electron is going to be around our hydrogen atom. So the first thing you want to find is the energy of the photon. And we already know that energy of a photon can be related to either the frequency or the wavelength. So because I was given a frequency, I'm going to use this version of the equation. H is Planck's constant, and uh, we were given the frequency here. So overall, we can calculate that the energy of the photon is 1.93 times 10 to the minus 18th joules. So this is the amount of energy that the hydrogen atom absorbs from the photon. In the last version, we had to change the sign of the energy in going from energy of photon to energy of hydrogen. We're not going to have this problem with this variation because the hydrogen absorbs energy from the photon. 
both of these numbers are going to have the same sign. So energy of the photon is equal to the energy of the hydrogen. We don't need to change the sign of it because that energy from the photon is being transferred to the hydrogen and the hydrogen is absorbing it. We use th this equation here now. We have calculated what the energy difference is. So this is the energy that's being absorbed by the hydrogen atom. RH is still a constant. Um, and in initial is our initial um, N value, which we were told was one. And what we're trying to find in this calculation is what's going to be the new N value or N final. So I set it up. Um, there is some algebra involved with coming up with the answer here. In the first step, I divide both sides by this number uh, to get to this point. I realize that one divided by one squared is one. I then subtract one from both sides and change the signs to uh, get to here. I invert both sides to get to this point, and then I take the square root of both sides. My calculator at this point is going to give the n value as being 2.959, but I realize in this situation, uh, n really needs to be a whole number. So we can only have whole number n values. We can't have a transition from 1 to 2.9. So in these calculations, your answer should be very, very close to a whole number if you've done them correctly, so close that you will feel comfortable to rounding it to a whole number. One other thing that you can check is the, is the N value increase. So during this, when the hydrogen atom is absorbing a photon, the electron should go to a higher N value. That's uh, what happens during, when hydrogen absorbs uh, a photon, the electron is kicked to a higher N value. So in this question, we started out with an initial N value of one and our final N value is three. So that makes sense that the uh, N value of the electron went to a higher number.